Is the heat dissipation of the iPhone 17 Pro Max really as good as they say? In this video, we'll use the iPhone 17 and 17 Pro Max as our test subjects to see how much of an improvement the new VC vapor chamber brings to the iPhone 17 series in various usage scenarios. On the iPhone 17 Pro Max, Apple has introduced a VC vapor chamber, claiming that this system's heat dissipation efficiency has increased by 300% compared to the previous generation. It also has an aluminum unibody design for better cooling. This data does have some credibility. After all, the iPhone 16 Pro Max used a thin layer of graphene for cooling, and the thermal conductivity of its titanium alloy body wasn't great either. Currently, most VC vapor chamber solutions mainly work by rapidly spreading the heat from core components to other areas, but they don't directly conduct the heat to the exterior of the phone's body. Compared to other manufacturers' solutions, Apple is more willing to spend money. They use a laser welding method to directly connect the VC vapor chamber to the aluminum unit body. Combined with the stronger thermal conductivity of aluminum itself, this allows heat from core areas like the chip to be quickly transferred to the outside of the body. Another point worth noting is that the power efficiency of this generation's Apple chip is truly impressive. To make our test more meaningful, we won't be testing games that generate a lot of heat from the chip, but rather other aspects. We got a Xiaomi 15 Ultra. The Xiaomi 15 Ultra features a dual-channel, custom-shaped loop heat pipe, which is a VC vapor chamber. However, its camera module and SoC have independent cooling. The Ray Raised 3D design and large dual wings provide a massive heat dissipation area. So we'll take this phone representing Android's VC cooling along with the iPhone 17 and 17 Pro Max for a 30 minute navigation session under the hot sun, followed by recording 4K video for a long time under the sun. Although this task also generates a lot of heat from the chip, it coordinates more core components, making it a relevant test. First, let's do outdoor navigation for half an hour. We'll set the brightness of all three phones to maximum and then start. Half an hour's passed, so let's check the temperature performance of the three phones after being exposed to the sun. We can see the iPhone 17's temperature is 43.4 degrees, the iPhone 17 Pro Max's maximum temperature is 43.1 degrees, and the Xiaomi 15 Ultra's temperature is 43.3 degrees. Under the scorching sun, the temperatures of the three phones didn't rise dramatically. We can also see that the heat on the 17 and 17 Pro Max is mainly concentrated on the right side of the body, near the chip's location. Overall, the heat distribution is quite even. The screen brightness of the three phones didn't drop significantly, still maintaining a relatively high brightness level. When dragging the map, there was no noticeable lag on the phones, and turning was very responsive. It seems half an hour of outdoor navigation poses no challenge for these three phones. Next, we'll expose the three phones to the scorching sun and record 4K 60fps video for half an hour to see how they perform. Brightness is at maximum again, let's start recording. Half an hour has now passed. Surprisingly, all three phones managed to record 4K video for half an hour without showing an overheating warning. Let's check the temperatures. The iPhone 17's maximum body temperature is 44.3 degrees, the iPhone 17 Pro Max's is 44.2 degrees, and the Xiaomi 15 Ultra's has reached 44.5 degrees. In addition, the iPhone's heat distribution is very even, whereas the Xiaomi clearly concentrates heat below and to the right of the battery and camera. Looking at the data, we can't tell if the Pro Series cooling upgrade that Apple mentioned has truly improved heat dissipation. Although the iPhone 17 Pro Max has a lower overall temperature, this could be due to the excellent power efficiency of the A19 chip or because of its larger body. Of course, we can't rule out the combined improvement from the aluminum alloy body and the VC vapor chamber working together. Analyzing the cooling materials, the VC vapor chamber on the iPhone 17 Pro Max is the same as those in the Android camp. It transfers heat through the evaporation and condensation cycle of deionized water inside a sealed chamber. Additionally, Apple uses an aluminum alloy midframe with thermal conductivity 20 times higher than titanium alloy, creating an efficient heat conduction path within the body through an integrated process. In other in other words, unlike the Android camp, which improves cooling by packing in more materials, Apple uses a combined approach of integrated heat dissipation, structural thermal conduction, and chip optimization. This philosophy of using system optimization instead of simply stacking specs is the core embodiment of what Tim Cook calls Apple's unique capability. Most importantly, the iPhone's temperature has indeed come down, and there's no doubt about that. You should know that when recording 4K video outdoors under the sun for an extended period, previous iPhone models would give you an overheating warning in less than 10 minutes. But these two, the iPhone 17 and Pro Max, don't have this problem. In conclusion, you really don't need to worry too much about the cooling of this generation's iPhone 17 series. And you definitely don't need to worry about seeing an overheating protection warning. Alright, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching patiently. See you next time. Bye-bye!